Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this wonderful Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. It is about uh, oh, 1130 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 3.7 down here into a section of the Middle America Trench. That is the latest earthquake activity there on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let's go ahead and jump into the latest information here on the Iceland activity. Now, this is the last six hours of earthquake activity. Notice a, uh, a considerable die down, so to speak. Even if we were to go back the last 12 hours or so, we're not looking at the incredible amount of earthquake activity that uh, we have seen over the past couple weeks here in this area. Uh, but there's definitely still no doubt uh, magma underneath the area. The question is, how much more of an influx of magma is it going to take uh, to break, break through the uh, surface? Now, the latest informational statement put out, uh, let me see here. I know we got a, I think we got a, a little bit further update here. Here we go. Uh, they're mentioning here that the intense weather can have an impact on the sensitivity of the seismic monitoring system. Well, we know that. Um since midnight today, 165 earthquakes have been recorded related to the volcanic unrest, all below 2.0. Uh, this is considerably fewer than in the last few days where we had roughly around 1,500 to 1,800 earthquakes per day. Um, now, they're stating that potentially the weather up there passing over this country, the Iceland area, uh, has had an impact on monitoring the activity and the uh, inability to potentially pick up some of these smaller earthquakes. And I chat about it a lot uh, when we um, look at Yellowstone seismograph stations or any other seismograph station where it has like a, a, uh, a broad area of wind, uh, rain, thunder, all that stuff can show up on the graph, making it hard to detect smaller earthquakes. So that may play a part in the, uh, the declining amount of earthquake activity so it's kind of hard to uh, assess here these guys are stating that whether the seismic activity is just, uh, decreasing overall so uh, i guess after the weather calms down we'll get a little bit better perspective of it the uh, deformation associated here with the dike intrusion that formed back on the 10th of november uh, continues uh, but the uplift, uplift in general is continuing near the Savart Singhi area. This is where the power plant is, the Blue Lagoon, all within this area. Now they still are claiming that the fissures or the ground opening up here where the magma is going to break through the surface is going to be more towards the east southeast compared to where they were currently seeing the uplift. But that's not a guarantee. That's just their assumption. And they're saying that the ground here is thicker, uh, the crust, a little bit thicker in terms of uh, the, act, the uh, ground uh, over here, where we've seen uh, past eruptions before. So a little thinner, making it easier potentially for the magma to break through the surface and create fissures in this area around the Hagafell area, uh, which is northeast of Iceland. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, the office here has increased surveillance in and around Grindavik and the area of Hagafell. While residents approach their properties and contractors work on protective measures. Uh, let's see here. Looks like fog and dark hail. Dark hail. Interesting. Uh, also affect the visual confirmation of the eruption with cameras. So it doesn't look like any changes. Um, and the decline in earthquake activity could be potentially um, related to the uh, overall weather activity up there. And that means that it could be covering up um, potential smaller quakes. Now, I do have an Iceland station keyed up here. And uh, I'm really not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity. It would definitely show up if there was. Uh, maybe some of the smaller quake activity, not so much. But uh, we would definitely see earthquake activity here on that Iceland station and I'm, I'm just not seeing it. So for now, um, just got to watch this and see uh, what happens. We did have a 3.1 um, earlier today, it looks like, that is north 
northeast of the Hagefeld area, well north, it appears as though everything is definitely bulging and increasing in uh, in the uh, Department of Inflation across this area. I mean, we've seen it here on this map. Uh, overall, the inflation is uh, growing here across the area and uh, kind of moving towards the north right now. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. I believe there is a considerable amount of magma below the surface here. The question is um, if it's going to stay down there or if it's going to attempt to find its way to the surface here. So we'll definitely check back on that a little bit later on. And of course, if we get any new updated information here. All right, uh, the Big Island of Hawaii still seeing some activity overnight, stretching down to Pahala up to the Kilauea Volcano, uh, where we're seeing a handful of earthquakes here today, generally um, below 3.0. Looks like we did see one, at least one, three-pointer earlier this morning. Pretty shallow earthquake activity and confined here south of the summit region where uh, we've been seeing a lot of the earthquake swarming take place. Uh, let's see what we got for the latest informational statement here real quick on Hawaii. <clears throat> and then we'll uh, move on. Kilauea daily update not put out today. So a little late on the scale for these folks, but uh, it's okay. We can go check it out ourselves. Uh, this site right here from the USGS kind of shows a whole bunch of relevant information when it comes to monitoring of volcanoes and of course you got web cameras up here pointing at the crater level or uh, lava lake area of Kilauea volcano not seeing any uh, visible lava obviously there's magma heated surface below this area but nothing breaking through volcanic gas is coming up obviously uh, but it looks like the eruptive uh, phase has not started yet we don't know when it's uh, when it's going to start Last two days inflation kicking back up here. Uh, that's on that graph pretty nicely. You can see it pretty well uh, defined. Now, compared to our very last event here though, it looks like we're gonna uh, run shy a little bit of the uh, peaking level in terms of the peak inflation that occurred during uh, the week, uh, second week of November, it looks like, of this month. Uh, so we'll, we'll watch this, see if it, uh, goes back down or potentially maybe uh, we could start doing these little hill patterns up here like we did on our last one there's a, a like a triple peak of inflation kicking up here we'll watch that and see if that does happen but uh, overall still inflation is elevated there across the Kilauea volcano but uh, no earth no um, eruption activity yet all right backing out of there let's take a look at the broader view Anything major overnight in terms of uh, large magnitudes? Doesn't look like it. In fact, the latest one, a 5.1 earlier this morning near Fiji. That's our latest large earthquake here after midnight. Uh, so for the most part, things are just a little on the mellow side today. Uh, West Coast, not a whole lot of activity. Uh, looks like a little bit of movement down here in the Brawley Seismic Zone. That is the extensional plate boundary here of the San Andreas Fault. Doesn't look like we're seeing anything above uh, 2.5, although it looks like maybe you know, yesterday 2.6 coming in way off the coast of the Southern California area and also 2.5 up north here uh, along the coast range uh, on the, uh, looks like either the Oceanic Fault or the San Simeon Fault System. Uh, but aside from that, uh, generally small microquake activity there today. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. We're going to run over here and check this out real quick. Not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity at all. Um, see here. There's a couple, it looks like, in this uh, little graph. This is recent, I believe. Uh, some of the activity showing up. Looks like it's mainly around the Pitchstone pl uh, Plateau area. Uh, earlier this morning, a handful of earthquakes there. And uh, I don't know if the USGS is reporting these or not. Let me see. Oh, well, it looks like they reported one, or maybe a couple of them there earlier this morning. These are generally very small earthquakes below, uh, maybe slightly above the 1.0 threshold, but nothing big going on there for Yellowstone for now. I'll continue to watch that. And of course, and report back on any changes 
Uh, let's see, anything else going on as far as worldwide activity goes? It looks like New Zealand had a 4.4 earthquake. Um, when was that? Just after midnight. 4.4, 117 kilometers deep here, just off of the plate boundary itself. Let's, uh, let's go check it out here real quick, see what's going on. It's a little bit of development going on down there across the New Zealand area. Uh, 3.8, six hours ago. Okay, these guys are reporting it as a 5.1 earthquake. Um, looks like it was felt mainly over South Island area. Quite a few folks reporting that down there. As uh, some weak, too light shaking, maybe. Yeah, it looks like about that uh, level of felt reports. Uh, for a total tally of uh, 1,186. Goodness, so... A little bit of shaking going on down there um, about 12 hours ago or so now. I'm sure we'll see it pretty nicely on this seismograph station. There it is right here. Uh, of course, the closer you get down to that uh, plate boundary, the more visible and prominent the signature will be. Very nicely, uh, showed up very nicely on the seismograph stations there in South Island. Goodness. Uh, but since then, things look a little on the quiet side, but still... A little bit of movement kicking up down there in New Zealand. Um, that's about the only area that really hasn't seen anything major going on here. 4.4 uh, I would not consider major. 4.7 even if it's a 5.1 like the uh, uh, GeoNet servers are reporting. I would not consider that any major activity. But still keep an eye on this area. Uh, really have, Like I say, we haven't really seen anything major going on here in quite a while. Alright, uh, what else we got? Anything else worldwide? Minimal activity in our typical zones. Definitely keep an eye on Iceland. And uh, even though it's just calming down for now, some of the earthquake activity doesn't mean that it's ending. All right, let's check out space weather activity here real quick as we uh, look at the solar ham site. Getting a little bit better perspective of this super huge, massive region of sunspots. And, uh, well, I'm hoping this holds together and uh, provides us with some flaring um here in the coming days it's pretty huge easily visible uh with a solar telescope solar telescope got to have a special lens there to view that sun of course and uh, looks like a couple of regions out here showing some further growth as well including this regional sunspot this one here looks a little disappointing i had my hopes up on it last night uh, but it looks like it's starting to fade away a little bit but there is still slight complexity within this magnetic core of this individual sunspot uh, but we'll keep an eye on a couple of these here coming around the eastern limb uh, overall threat right now looks like 99 percent chance for c flare m flare at 40 x flare around five percent chance or so um, we did have a little bit of the auroras kick up overnight into the three and four cape uh, kp index but that was about it we'll continue to watch this uh, active region UV filter image here does show uh, quite the activity stirring up out here. Uh, we'll get a little bit better perspective here in the coming days and see how much the sun wants to throw flares at us. All right, Storm Prediction Center here real quick. Current day one outlook, slight risk for some severe weather down in the south. Looks like there is a 5% tornado possibility, mainly down in Alabama. Um, but with portions of Florida being affected and, uh, Georgia in there as well. So heads up for that tornado potential and a little bit of wind damage potential as well. All right, folks, we're going to get out of here. Have yourself a good day and, uh, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening. Take care.